We're going to seed broccoli today. Um, we seed them in a tray. It's called 512, which stands for there's 512 actual cells in the particular tray. Um, we use a compost-based potting mix. Um, and so I don't need to add any additional fertilizer or anything like that. But basically just put piles of the fertilizer on, move them around and make sure all the tray, all the cells get filled and then brush off the excess so I can actually see the different cells wipe off the excess from the sides as well. And then I just, I make all the trays that I'm going to need first, um, get that part done. Um, once all the trays are made, um, I, uh, we need to make a depression in the actual tray so the seed can sit in there and not roll off to another tray. So I basically will just take, um, I, I stack up all the trays that I'm using so all the cells are lined up. And then I'll take an empty tray and put that one on the top. And then I just press down. And make sure you press down evenly across all of the cells so you get a good depression um, in all of the cells. And then off that comes. And you'll see there's a depression now in each of the each of the cells. We use a vacuum seeder to do most of our seeds, not all of them, but most of them. Um, it's made by Seed Easy Seeder. Um, and they send it to you with um, the vacuum part, the actual vacuum, the hose, um, a tray that the, um, the plug trays sit into, and a little tray to put your seeds in. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is get the right tray, um, seed plate, really is what it's called, onto the seeder. It just comes right off. There's a actual rubber, foam rubber gasket seal around there and this just um, slides right in and that foam rubber seal hold, keeps that vacuum tight. Um, you can buy uh, any number of trays from CDs um, and they also do custom ones. What? I'm going to zoom in. Um, it, they basically order them by the number of cells, um, number of holes, the size of the hole, so depending on the type of seed that you're seeding, um, obviously some seeds are bigger than others um, and then also the manufacturer of the plug tray because uh, their spacing is a little different sometimes there may be a rib in between so on the edge here it, uh, the first number is basically the size of the hole I don't really know what that number stands for but CDs has a chart on their website um, you look up the num this type of seed that you're seeding and it says you need number 16 or number 3 or whatever um, so we're doing broccoli today um, that was the number 16 it's 512, so 512 cells, and TO is the manufacturer of the tray, TO Plastics. We have a bunch of trays. They're not cheap, so you want to try to standardize as much as possible. Um, we've got um, some for 128, um, 200 count trays, and then the 512, um, and different seed sizes. So um, one of them, they did a custom tray for us that actually has three holes for every cell. When we do our onions, we do multiples, and it was easier to have them do a custom tray for us. Again, they're not cheap, so standardization is important. Um, the way the vacuum seeder works, um, obviously they send you a vacuum. Um, it connects, and this is supposed to be loose, this hose, so um, you can take it on and off, and you can spin the, the tray. Um, and you also have, you have two ways to adjust the suction of the vacuum. There's a, a um, valve that will reduce the vacuum all the way to off and in between. And then underneath, there's a damper, I guess that's what it's called, um, where you can open it all the way. That will be the least amount of vacuum closed all the way, will be the most amount of vacuum. The reason why you'd want to adjust the vacuum is um, you want the seed to stick to the hole, but you don't want a lot of multiple seeds necessarily to stick to the hole. So you want the most vacuum to keep it on there, but back it up enough so you get the singulation, if you want. Uh, maybe you do want multiple seeds in a cell. Um, so you, you make any adjustments that you need there. It's on. Um, I'll put my tray back on. These go with the, the label out. 
You just push it down. That's one thing I really like about this cedar. It's so easy to change the trays. Um, you don't need to screw them on or off. There's no tools. You just take it right on and off and they, they, um, they seal really well. So the next thing you want to do is um, put your plug tray on um, the plug tray holder, I guess is what you'd call it. And there's a stop here. So basically, you slide it on until the bottom of the cells hit that stop. And you want to make sure um, that this stop is adjustable. So you want to make sure, I'm going to take this off, that where it is, this, when you turn it upside down, the seed is actually going to drop into the cell. So you can check it by putting the corner of the vacuum seeder into the corner of this plug holder and then just look. You know, if you put this down, are those holes going to line up with the cells? And this one looks really good. If it's not, um, you can take this off, a little flathead screwdriver, loosen this one and on the other side there's another one and you can slide, you'll see there's a track here, you can slide this uh, stop back and forth um, to make any a kind of adjustment that you would need on that. Small adjustments, you know, when you need to change it, I, I most of mine are in the same spot. I do have one tray that I do have to move them and you don't have to move it a lot to make a big difference. So I'm going to go ahead and put my tray back on. Um, I've already dumped my seeds into here. Make sure these are really clean too before you put your seeds in there. If there's any like soil or dirt or dust, um, when you dump that out, it's going to dump into the seed, the, um, the tray, and the vacuum's going to suck that dirt right up into the hole and block the hole and the seed won't stick there. So make sure that's clean. Those are clean first. Um, and I also use a um, some plastic uh, container that I used to dump the excess seeds into. Um, on their site they show, you know, you can dump the seeds back into here, um, but I use a really big thing. It gives me a lot more tolerance for if the seeds didn't stick as well, I might have doubles on here. So when I turn it upside down, some of those fall off and I'm not, they're not just falling into the tray or falling wherever. I can, I can save those seeds and reuse them. So I'm ready to actually seed. Um, all the brassica seeds, as you can see, are really nice and round and uniform. These are really easy to do. They singulate really well. Other, some other seeds like uh, lettuce seeds or onion seeds that we've done already, odd shaped, don't necessarily singulate all that well. Um, so there might be a little bit of manual um, uh, moving some seeds around if there's too many or if it missed a cell. Um, but it certainly saves you a ton of time, even if you do have to manually move them around rather than hand seeding everyone. It's going to be a little noisy here, so I'm going to turn the, the vacuum on. You also want to make sure the vacuum, as you know, on any kind of vacuum, um, has an exhaust out the back. Um, it's going to blow. So make sure that's facing away from your seed trays because um, it will blow stuff around. Another thing that we do, so I'll put this off so you can hear me is um and they don't they don't they didn't necessarily recommend this but i found that it's helpful is we actually will vacuum off the tray itself when we get started um, to make sure it's nice and clean um, also a couple times you know maybe i'll do two or three trays and then you know we might start getting some of the potting soil sticking to it so i'll you know start to do it again i'll do it again so that for so the the holes stay nice and um, clear Backing it off. And then I dump the seeds in the top corner. You can see it's angled down, so the seeds are going to roll this way. Um, you don't want to put a ton of seeds on there. You want to put enough. Um, when you have a, if you put way more seeds than you need, you're gonna most likely gonna get a lot of doubles. So just put what you think the amount of seeds that you'll need, and that comes with experience. A little bit more, and then you want to pick it up, and you, I hold it by the hose and make sure you're pushing the hose in to keep that vacuum going. And then there's a little handle on this side, and you just sort of work the seeds back and forth 
all the way down the tray. And you see that the seeds are sort of sticking to the holes. Until you get all the way to the end. And then you want to get the seeds down to the last corner. And you can see I have a few that have multiple stuck to them. Um, you can do a light tap on it, or even just touch those, and they'll fall off. Now that you have them all singulated and you've got all the seeds down in the corner, I take it over to my bin, and I turn it upside down, and dump the extra seeds in there. And I can see that they're all sticking really well, they're not falling off. And then I'll come over, line it up, turn it all the way upside down, and I pull the hose off to stop the vacuum. You can also turn the valve to shut it off, but it's so much easier to just pull this off. I usually give it a little couple taps to make sure it releases all the seeds. Don't put your hose back on until you take the spray off. Um, lift it up, spin it back over, and you'll see all the seeds came off. 